I'm kind to makeup. I'm kind to hair. I'm kind more so than I am to fellow actors. Because fellow actors are not going to have my back the way somebody on set is going to have my back. Welcome to Common Sense Mamita. I'm Lydia Nicole. If it is your first time and you're looking for acting tips, showbiz insight, or life lessons, you have come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get everything in real time. Today, I am just delighted to bring to Common Sense Mamita a wonderful, amazing actress, woman, mother, wife, and sister. So please help me welcome Norma Maldonado. Yay! Thank welcome, you. Norma. Thank you. I'm it's so such excited a... to have you at the table. I am honored to be here. So First thank of all, you. you're a role model. So I just want to put that out there. Thank you. Um, years and years and years and years ago, I uh, remember you because you worked at a temp agency. I did. And you got me some work. And I just remember, I think it was Louisa Lachin said, John Vargas' sister is an actress and she works at a temp agency. And during that time, I needed some money and I was able to get what I needed. And I always remember that kindness that you, because you didn't know me, you didn't know anything about me. You just said, yeah, go over over here bye -bye. and that was it I was able to get whatever I needed and keep it going but wow. I, I just wanted to thank I'm you touched. officially because it, it made such an impact on me you know that somebody who didn't know me was willing to you know throw me a bone I, and it was it was great so I just want to say thank you <laughs> thank oh, you thank welcome. you well you know I, I was in a position to help people and I favored actors because I being one myself I knew that you know, sometimes jobs were not as readily coming as yes. they should or could be. So in between, you know, I would prefer giving actors that position, that job, that temp job, than give it to someone else. But I helped as many people. You know, it's it's... I was saying to friends of mine yesterday, the greatest thing about being able to give or the greatest gift in giving is that you can. So when you can, what? why not? To this day, I still do stuff like that. If I go out, for example, on an audition and I think so-and-so um, could benefit from this or, hey, call your agents, there's this one job, why not? I haven't gone auditioning in a while, but when I did, if I went up for a part that I was not right for, I would actually tell the casting director to call certain actors. You know who would be really good for this yeah <laughs> one time i had a, a, a casting director get pissed at me for doing that yeah they were like that's my job i know who to call in i was like okay but i would do that because i just think you know it comes around well hollywood's best kept secret when so and such actor or actress is working guess what that means they're not available for the next job <laughs> so be grateful oh you didn't get it but so and so did good good work work because yes. now you're out of the running yes. although there are people that do multiple I remember once a very well-known actress was just landed a regular a series regular and then there was another job and I had read for that and I really wanted it and I bumped into her husband and he goes you know my wife is on this one show but she's also up for this other could you please pray that she gets both and I'm like sure <laughs> <laughs> she got both <laughs> Well, it had her name on it. It that, did. That was, that My was name was thing. on it. It's just yes. that it was under hers. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Where are you from originally? I was born on Governor's Island in New York. I'm a New Yorican and raised in the Bronx, but having a father in the Air Force, we traveled around a lot. Now, how did you end up on Governor's Island? I mean, Because that's... it was military base. Oh, okay. Well, I think the ferry, that's how I Got landed it. there. <laughs> And then you moved to Puerto Rico? When my father died, the one thing that I love about our people is that no matter who we are, no matter where we are, the one thing we have is our pride mm -hmm. in our identity as Puerto Ricans. So when I was little growing up, you know, you go to different schools and blah, blah, blah. And the kids were, oh, I'm of French descent. I'm of that descent, German, English, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you know, I'm Puerto Rican. And they go, we'll say something in Spanish. And my father always said, when they ask you, when they test you, do you speak Spanish? Just say, soy Puerto Riqueña and do it with pride. So he had a lot of pride and he instilled mm. that in me. And his 
dream was to retire in Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 30. My mother wow. up and packed us all, and we went to the culture shock, which was Puerto Rico. And in those days, it was pretty much antiquado. It was pretty uh, old-fashioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, like, Don, Doña, you come home from your school, and you shower, and then you sit in the balcony, and you're, you have your little fan. I mean, I swear to God. And, and chaperones. I used to go out with my brother when he had girlfriends, and I would sit in the car like this while they're making out. <laughs> Because I was the designated chaperone. Just throw my oh brother my under the bus. You'd hear a and you're like, oh, oh, really? One day I'll have a boyfriend. That's hilarious. How did you get into acting? In third grade in the Bronx, I got up on stage and I said something and I messed up my lines, but I quickly fixed it and people laughed and I go, okay, this is it. So at the age of 14, while in Puerto Rico, I got my first play, which was called The Me Nobody Knows. Oh yes. And I joined the I union and I was with Jose de Guzman, who's became a big Broadway star and was nominated uh, for Tony's with Rick Negron, Ricky Negron, who went on to do In the Heights and now he mm. revived Hamilton in Puerto Rico mm. recently. Edwin Sanchez, who is a playwright in New York, who's doing very well, and amongst many other actors mm -hmm. that I worked with. So it was it was nice. That was my first job. I was 14 years old. When did you come to the States? I came to the States after college. So oh, I went okay. to middle school, high school, and college in Puerto Rico. I got my uh, degree in psychology. And then I went to do my master's in um, Atlanta because my mother had moved oh, to Atlanta. Wow. And then uh, my and brother- And your master's was in psychology as well? I did one year of clinical and then I switched because the acting bug, my father always wanted me, I always told him I wanted to be an actress and he goes, well, I want you to get an education first. So that was the driving force to get to mm -hmm. college. My brother, meanwhile, was in Carnegie Mellon, you yes. know, doing his <laughs> razzle-dazzle <laughs> stage stuff. And I was like, <laughs> because it was in my heart. Right. He had a TV series out here and he was doing really, really well. And it's like, well, I'm gonna come out to California and be with my brother. And he was so kind to let me live with him and his um, then girlfriend. And then um, his agency went and worked with them as an intern. And that's when I was watching all these people going out and stapling their resumes and wondering why can't they be more responsible and staple this at home? Just wondering, <laughs> I mean, it's your job as an actor to take care of yourself stuff no so then I said that's it I, I gotta act and I did a lot of theater here and then my brother came to me one day and said do you want to continue to do 99 seat theaters and not get paid or do you want to get paid I, said, I want to get paid and he said okay then stop doing theater and so I stopped doing theater and I started doing TV who was your first agent back in the day there was a, a magazine which is like the backstage mm -hmm. right now called the drama log right. and I called it the dream along <laughs> and in the back they always had ads for agents. Now I was doing a lot of little shorts and this and that and the other. And anyway, this one agency took my bite, you know, I sent mm -hmm. my resume and they said, come meet me at blah, blah, blah. And I go there and it's this black guy on a fold up chair in a parking lot like Martin Luther King, I will make you a star. Oh and people were walking away laughing. And I said, well, it can't be any worse than what I'm doing with my self submissions. So I went, I said, yeah. And I went to his office two days later and he's sitting there peeling an orange on my resume and headshot and it's drip, drip, drip on my picture. And he's like, yeah, I'll sign you. And I said, okay. Three weeks later, I got an audition for a commercial. I booked it, I got my SAG card, and that was it. Self-submission, what is that? Self-submission is when you know about a project and you send your material to the casting people to see, like there was um, Billy Dumata, who he's a casting director. Wonderful casting director. Wonderful guy. Yes. He was doing some movie about biker chicks and I didn't get in. So I wrote him a letter. I said, come on, Billy, you really need to see me. And he did, you know, he, he responded to that. So, you know, you don't want to be too pushy. You want to have a little bit of dignity, but you also have to show them that you're serious about this and that if you believe you can do it, I didn't book it, but I did get in. So. And that's that's all you can ask for, right? Yeah. Is to get a chance to read for the part. And that created a great friendship between us. So oh, there you go. That's awesome. I just wanted to say one thing about self-submission. 
communication and, and about sending your letters or notes. I did that a lot. Many of my jobs came from oh, wow. submitting myself and, and I had an agent. I was not waiting for my agent and I would send these creative notes. I, I would just get all up in the note and I would do my, my work every morning. I would go to farmer's market, get my reporter, get wow. my variety, look and see who's getting ready to do what project. So a lot of my submissions were on projects that were not yet fully ready. In production. Yes. And so I got in on the ground floor of so many things. Even stuff I didn't book, I got in on. I, I, I got in on so many things and a lot of times I was too young. But see, you said something very interesting because you said that you got your reporter and your variety. I mean, right now those magazines are online and yes. they're accessible. There's also Deadline Hollywood. And The Wrap. And The Wrap. And also there's a, one that I love is The Cast About. You pay, it's a subscription minimal. Okay. But what it shows you is it shows you who's casting what. Mm. So if you hear, oh, it's like West Side Story. So you look up West Side Story because Spielberg is in West Side Story. Puerto Rico. Oh, was. So you look and it shows you the casting director and then you can click on it and it has their address. So it's just another way to get in. You That's know, excellent. You have to be proactive. Yes, you cannot wait as an actor for an agent because if you're not hot, they're not on you. They're not, oh, let me send Norma out. They're like, no, I'm sending Marina out. No, yeah, not you know. Marina. <laughs> the reality yeah. is they're sending the people who are already booking. Yeah, who are producing They're not results. sending people who are on the shelf. Right. They, you know, that's the manager's job if they have a manager. Yeah. But it is your job as an actor to seek employment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good if you have an agent. And if you don't, you self-submit. You find out who's doing what. You get in that group of actors that will share information with you, hopefully. You know, I'm going on this thing, and there's a part here. You know, I, right. I was reading the sides, and, you know, there's a woman like you. You would be great. You should send Billy DeMata your stuff. Back in the day, uh, not that long ago, they would have generals, and you yes. can go in and meet. But you know what's the advantage now is self-taping. If you can't get in the door, self-tape. And, and, you know, there are uh, special places that you can go to have it done. If you're going to do it to introduce yourself, do it right. Spend a couple of bucks, invest into that. And go, go somewhere where yeah. they can tape you and make you look good. And then send it to the casting office and say, look, I know that this was unsolicited, but please give me a chance. How do you prepare for an audition as someone who has had training and you've studied and you continue to study what I do is I look at the material and then I go line per line to see what it is that you know that is being said what, what's going on in the scene and then I start doing backstory and start to, that just that's justified by the lines if it's not told to you then you create it but it has to be you know justified by the information mm -hmm. given so it's like a detective and it's fun and then you go into that world and you just live in that fantasy life for a little bit, you know, and then you proceed from there. And then now I've started self-taping before I go in because I like to watch myself while I'm taping. Once I'm That's on smart. TV, I don't watch myself right? because I have a tendency to roll my eyes and shake my head and talk like this. You so, have your little habits uh, that you do. All actors have a telltale when they're not confident, either their eyes bug out, they go... <laughs> They shake, you know, or just tips. Uh, I used to do a lot of, uh, I mean, you cut that up, but yes. you see, you get a little bit of a taste for what it is, mm -hmm. and then you go, okay, so this is sort of like maybe I need to that's not move so much. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I, I've started doing that, and my husband, God bless him, he's Serbian, and so he talks with accent, and it's it's kind of funny. But I do that before that. I just very grateful that I had just booked a. Showtime pilot called Hombre, and it was to be immigration type lawyer. And poor Gael Garcia Reynal comes to me. His wife just got abducted by ICE, and he's like, he needs help. And the first thing I ask him is, uh, well, I'd say, well, before we proceed, you got to know about our fees. Personally, me, I found that very hard. You know, how am I going to ask somebody who's downtrodden about money? And it's a lot of money. So I did research, and I realized that legally, for a lot of people, if you don't have legal representation, you could be, you know, in purgatory for 10 years. And then for it to be justifiable, you do have to charge. I mean, 
you know, I've got people that I have sending out. Right, that right. Are, so anyway, it, it justified it to the point that when I went in, I was totally engaged with that justification. And you go in right before you think, before you go in, you kind of go over what it is that the scene is about. It's nice to see people and say hi, but you gotta keep your distance. And there are, sadly. And, and when you're saying nice to see people and say hi, is that in the waiting area? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about there are saboteurs. machinations that go on in the waiting area. There are saboteurs. As, unfortunately, and and if they're not, maybe it's my projection. But the other day, I, I was up for it was three lines or something for a sitcom, and there were a group of us. One actress was very focused, God bless her, and you know she went in. The rest of us, I was a little yappy that day. It was my birthday. I was like, ah, nah, nah, nah. but it was great to see people. Now, if it's something more serious, I try to just stay in the moment because it's so easy to get distracted, mm -hmm. you know. And you want to go in there grounded, and you want to go in there focused. But then afterwards, you can have a coffee or something, right? But stay focused, centered on the material until you come out. The head trips that other actors will take you through, you know, and we don't realize it. That's that's not something we're taught in acting class. Um, when you get into an audition, you got to focus. It is not time to chat with people or because they'll get in your head space. I actually shared something about that in a vlog and I'll link it so you can watch it. It is, you know, you really do have to focus. You really do have to, you know, work on the character, get in a corner, not talk to people and just do your work and then when you can come you come out you can say I'll wait for you outside mm -hmm. I want to talk to you I'll wait for you out. wait for the person you know then have your chit chat and also respect other people I've been guilty like oh hi oh hi oh you're going in next I'm sorry you know and you leave them alone now for commercials that being said I'm a chatterbox because what it does for me it it juices me up it loosens so you up when yeah. I go in it's like you know, it depends on the if it's heavy material and stuff, you gotta stay in your zone, you know, and, and protect your art. You went in, you auditioned, you you worked on the script or your sides. Now you booked the job. What more do you bring to the part now that you've booked it? Because in audition, sometimes you don't have a lot of time to prepare. So now that you've booked it, what kind of work do you do on it? Well, I go out and start shopping first of all. <laughs> hmm, now I can buy now. No. Um, I continue to break it down because you know the truth is. The the material that you get in auditions isn't necessarily the same thing you're going to get because you get all these rewrites. You get the yellow pages, the blue pages, the nana pages. Make sure that I rest. No alcohol, no bad food. I try to be as healthy and as present as possible. Know my stuff. I'm always camera ready. I mean, mm -hmm. in the sense that I know all my lines. I've been blessed to have a very good, quick memory. So I memorize. I, I have like kind of dyslexia. Me too. <laughs> so I have to know, I don't take, when I go in, I never read my sides. And I'm also older, so I need glasses. So you can't have glasses, you know, you can't do that. So, but Margie Haber, who I also studied with, has a beautiful technique of how to take it from the page yes. to the thing. Yes, she does. And I learned, and she's amazing, but that's not my gift. So I just have to memorize. So I'm ready. Another thing I do is when I get to set, I'm very kind to the PA. I'm kind to makeup. I'm kind to hair. I'm kind more so than I am to fellow actors. Because fellow actors are not gonna have my back the way somebody on set is gonna have my back. Mm -hmm. The lighting people, the grips, whomever. I've had many people come up, Barbara, oh wow, thanks. Hey, let me get you some water. They, and the cinematographer, the DP has to be your friend. Yeah. You have to, and you respect. they are really looking at you. More yeah. than anybody else, they can see if something is wrong with you on camera and they will help you. If they like you, They'll say, move over here. Oh, Go over absolutely. Here. Yes. You got to make the DP your friend. It's, it's a collaborative effort. We all have an important role to play, even all the way to, you know, crafty. You're like, and they have, oh, here's a little song. Thank you. You know, and the actors, of course, you have to get along with and stuff. But going on a show as a guest star, for me, is like going to a party that's already been happening. And somehow you've got to walk in and make it work. Don't sit there wanting them to to take care of you. You gotta take care of yourself. You gotta be prepared. If you have questions, you ask. You gotta also be smart about the questions that you ask. You can't be asking questions just to try to win over the director. And the director many times on these episodics are also like 
us. Right. They're, they're looking for their next gig. You may want to impress them. That's the most important thing I can give any young actor, any aspiring actor, is don't do it to impress anyone. Um, when I was first starting out, it was like I'd hear tips like, go in there and blow them away. Or you hear, I remember distinctly when they were talking about Sarah Jessica Parker in Love Story, the movie uh, that she, or not Love Story, but LA, Love, LA Story. Mm -hmm. She went in and she was magical and she blew them away. That's her. Do not go in a room to blow anybody away. <laughs> No blowing, no matter what. <laughs> because then the focus is not about the character's journey. It's about you trying to impress. And right. you will impress some people, and you will not impress others. And we are humans. We can suss it out. Right. And I think the, blow, the blowing away is a result of you coming in, being of service, and really honoring the character and the script and uh, the people who you're reading for. How can I be of service to you? Exactly. What, what do you need? which is really important that you say that and and I appreciate that you said that because we come in going I want I need please book me I got to pay my rent I got to whatever but it is us that are we're storytellers we're here to serve the story and you must believe that every single person in that room wants you to do well because they want a good product and I think also when you come into the audition you won. You have to bring that in the room. You already won because there were hundreds of actors that did not get the opportunity to come into the room. That right there you won. So now you come in, you be of service, you give them what they need, and then you go on your merry way because at that point it's not up to you. It's out of your hands. Because a lot of times it, it's not even about you. It's about they're looking who's going to match the lead actor. You know, you might be too short. You might be too tall. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the look of the project. Yeah. What, how they're looking to do it and if you don't get that job and you did your job when you came in they remember that absolutely and they appreciate that and then they will call you in for something else having been on the other side for the last few years and sitting in casting sessions what I have learned is they really root for you. If they brought you in, they're really rooting for you. And sometimes when you don't fit that part because of uh, another actor who, who they're trying to match you up with, the matching isn't going to work. I've seen the director say, you know what? Let's write another part for that mm -hmm. actor because I really like that actor. Or keep that actor in mind. We're, we're going to bring her in for the next episode uh, the next episode or we're gonna you know put them on the list you you get put on a list and so I think actors have to know that first of all the fact that they came into the audition they've won and that this is where relationships get developed I'm gonna keep calling Billy Damata <laughs> Billy Damata sees your work you're not right for that but he loved something about you what you brought in the room he goes I love this woman I'm gonna put her in this category and the next time I have something she's coming in for this mm -hmm. and that's how you you start building the relationship because casting directors want you to do good so they come off looking good yeah because they need to look because casting directors much like us also have to sing for their supper if they're bringing in talent that's not matching what the producers are looking for then they get in trouble so you always bring in your a-game to your ability I've been doing this for 30 plus years professionally mm -hmm. there are projects that I get nervous on this one about the blowfly maggot gestation was huge and I was terrified and I even told my husband maybe I should just say I'll do a self tape but I am not a quitter and I again I'm Mayo doing my thing <laughs> and I went in and it wasn't a, it became not about booking the job it became about the challenge because what difference is it the day before I went to something and I just you know did the best I could and I didn't care but what difference is it because it has a name actor or a name you know studio behind it than somebody's little project. I've done uh, short films that the writers or the directors have gone on to have amazing careers. So you never know. You you can't be too full of yourself. There's got to be a lot of humility mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you're approached with something that is so great and you're like, you truly want it, what helped me get over that was your precise thought that I said, wow, I'm being brought in. That's a win right there. And I'm getting a chance. I'm going to do the best I can with this character 
character and just w let the chips fall where they may and not be so attached to the outcome. Yes. No expectation, you know. And while I was sitting there, ironically enough, some a dear friend of mine who is a very talented, very successful, hardworking, works all the time. His manager was trying to get him in and he couldn't. I overheard them mentioning his name and I'm like, wow. So, but this is life lessons. Every audition also is a life lesson about yourself, how you approach yourself, how you think about yourself. You know, you can't be too big for your britches, but you also have to honor and know that you have worth. And when people- Your boundaries, you gotta, yeah. you gotta know your boundaries. And when people say to me, and this is important for all you young up and coming, when people say, how do you handle rejection? I go, oh, I'm not rejecting. Rejected. It's not rejection, it's selection, which is a big difference. They're not rejecting me, they're just not selecting me. Just like this blouse I wore today, but maybe I have one in my closet that's worth $3,000 more than this. Okay, I don't have anything with it. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. Or, or my t-shirt that I love that I got at Target for five bucks, right. you know. You don't get t-shirts in Target for five bucks. But anyway, but the point I I'm trying to make, yeah, okay, unless they're on clearance, right? <laughs> clearance. There's some good ones on clearance, and they're soft. <laughs> but the thing is, is a growing thing. And, and with that being said, I never stop taking classes. And for you actors that have been in it for a longer time, this is my secret. Shh, don't tell anybody. This, this, nobody's going to hear this, right? No. Okay. I'm a vampire, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I truly am. So you go to an acting class or you're around actors that been that are seasoned, that have been around, there's a little jadedness. There has to be. You've been in it for a while, you get a little tired. But you go into an acting class and there's young people right. with dreams and aspirations. I hook that up like, you know, I yes. suck that right into yes. it and I'm like, and I get rejuvenated right. because you ride on that energy and it's all about energy. Whatever energy you bring in the room, I read for the pilot of Felicity, J.J. Abrams, and I walk in the room and it's him and the director and they're these young kids and I look at them and it was to play a principal and I was way younger than what they wanted but I was there and I sat there and I'm like aww and, but I was excited for them. It was a genuine excitement. By the time I got to the car the job was mine because they felt that I had passion for their project. Mm -hmm. But with that being said with so many ways right now with the YouTube with you know web series and stuff there are a lot of people making projects. And you find these people a lot in acting classes. That's where you network. Yes. You know, going to a party and seeing a casting director and hounding them. Yes. Yes. You go, you meet people, you collaborate. I have been invited to many sets because of the connections that I've made. And I do it with love and I do it with honor. And I give them just as much of myself than I would for a big TV production. Because you never no, and you don't do it just because you never, you do it because you honor your craft and you respect it. And you support your peers, you support your community. You know, that's really, it's like, I'm supporting you. Even if I'm not in it, I'm supporting you. Let's let's get this puppy going. I've had people go, oh my God, you really want to be in my, my thing? And I go, yeah, I'll do it. Why not? You bring your gift that you've gotten and you share it. So with all this experience and you've done a lot of TV shows, you, you've done a lot and you've taken a lot of classes. What are three tips that you would give young actors that are starting out? Take care of yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit. You don't have to be 100%. You can be broken, it's okay. But don't be hard on yourself. Also don't make excuses for yourself where you can better yourself better yourself. This is, as they say, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Give yourself time. Have outside interest as well. Be an interesting person just, you know, as a person. Study. Know your craft. Look at people who work. Admire. Go to the theater. Support the theater. Support the arts. Be an artist. Travel the world if you can. And if you can't, Travel your, this town, LA has got so many wonderful cultural things that we are not aware of. Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and in the summer at the Hollywood Bowl from 10 to 12, they have free uh, uh, rehearsals. So you could sit in and watch the Philharmonic rehearse for that night's show. Boom, I didn't have to pay for that. Read, if you can't take acting classes, then read. Read acting books. You know, watch on, on YouTube. Watch this on YouTube. Learn. Learn from people. Don't see other people as competition. The competition lies within you because when you walk in the room, they're not in the room with you unless you bring them. And honor yourself. It's a creative art that is a lifetime. Honor yourself. What does that look like in a practical way? Honoring yourself is relationships. God knows I had some bad ones. 
my husband's not going to watch this. <laughs> um, but, you know, I used to be the girl that would go to class, and if there was a cute guy, that was my focus. And so I did waste a lot of my early years as an actress because I was in love. And, oh, I didn't go to rehearsal. You know, I, I, I did mess around a lot, you know, or I would be late for rehearsal. And then, and then when I went to Joanne's class, it's like, you couldn't be late. You couldn't mess miss, around. And you couldn't miss classes. And, you couldn't, and she had classes at the most obscure times. Yes. Like on a Tuesday at 9 and then Thursday at 3, you know, something very bizarre. But you had to be disciplined. To honor yourself is to know that you have worth and treat yourself as such. So if you're in a toxic relationship, I mean, one thing that I say, I know it's not good, but I tell a lot of young people, if you can avoid being in a relationship, then avoid being in a relationship. And your self-talk. I'm saying this only from my own experience mm -hmm. because I've done a lot of bad self-talk. I've done a lot of bad habits. I've never gone to set or to rehearsal or to audition ever hungover because I want to be pure when I work. And to not take yourself too seriously, you know, to be have levity, have fun. Not doing liquor, but criticizing yourself is just as bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like I don't I don't do any substances. But I really don't like how I look. I really am not good. I really, and, and that kills you. That, that just. <gasps> oh, God, I could have yes. done it. I should have done it. Yes. It's not easy, but learn the art of letting go. One other thing that about what you were asking me, like to tell the young people or the young artists, they don't have to be young, they could be 50 and starting, is trust. Somehow, this is like a very magical type of career. And if you stay afloat, things will come around. So many years ago, there weren't that many Puerto Ricans right. living in L.A. It was a very rare thing to see. And so my friend goes, oh, my God, Ricky Martin's on General Hospital. you got to go meet him. Now, I had been, Mark Teschner's another one of my saints. Excellent um, um, casting director. Uh, so is Scott yes. Jiginger, so I, I have to put it out there. But Mark Teschner, who shares a birthday with me, I was working on and off in General Hospital, and so I went to the set to meet this Ricky Martin. I did not grow up listening to Menudo. And so I meet this guy, he's tall, he's got long hair, and we start talking in Spanish, and I just, I'm crazy about him, he's so Funny, so nice. And his storyline in General Hospital was that he gave up a child in Puerto Rico. And so I'm joking with him and I go, wouldn't that be funny if your storyline takes you back to Puerto Rico and I'm the one who adopted your child? Isn't that cool? And <laughs> two weeks later, I swear, Mark calls me directly and he said, Norma, would you mind going to Puerto Rico? It's an overnight thing. I go, I'm there. And he goes, but you have to come in and meet Wendy, who was the producer. I said, well, I'm going to Atlanta to see my mom, but I went and took my beta, beta tape. Remember beta? Yes, oh yes. Beagle. So I took it in and I flew to Atlanta and I didn't get it. My friend uh, Margarita Franco got it and she was in Puerto Rico for a week and I cried for nine years. And I cried because I really wanted to go to Puerto Rico. And it was an easy role. And it's like, I brought it into existence by saying mm -hmm. it. A couple of other times, chances to work in Puerto Rico didn't happen. Fast forward, I'm in Serbia, where my husband is from, and we're vacationing there. And my agent writes and goes, there's this role, blah, blah, blah. It's a self-tape, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't read that it shoots in Puerto Rico. So I do the self-tape and I send it. It shoots in Puerto Rico. Two days later, I'm on a plane to Puerto Rico. I worked on Mad Dogs with Michael Imperioli. Hello. <laughs> I was there at a five-star hotel for two and a half weeks. Beautiful. The moral of the story, if it doesn't happen now, it doesn't mean it won't. And I just went to listen to these uh, producers and writers and actors for transgender storytelling. I'm not transgender. I don't have any family that is, but I empathize with that. And I admire them because they have the deck stacked, stacked against them, and yet they persevere. So another thing is to persevere. If this is truly what's in your heart, then go for it. Don't take a no or don't take a rejection selection. Don't take it personal. And especially if you prepare and you're the character, then, then they're not really not selecting you. They're not selecting that character interpretation. How about that? Good right. self-defense thing. But just keep at it. And, and that's where you... You need a good support system. I have so many friends that don't understand, and it does it does deflate me at times. But I do have my support with my husband and myself. I've had you know fantasies of winning some kind of award, and the first thing I say, I want to thank myself. <laughs> winning awards in acting is not a fantasy. No, it it is about a campaign. It is. It is about. I think that this role that I did deserves a nomination. So if it's an Emmy, then I'm gonna go ahead and see how I can campaign for myself. I, I will say that about Emmys, and we we also have a video on this exact thing where some actresses 
did. They campaigned for Emmys. We had the uh, one of the people from the Emmys talking with us. We think it's like, oh my God, that is so big. But the reality is you can't pay for it. You yeah. put and it in motion. it's not motion. cheap. It's not no, cheap. it's not cheap. But if it's something that you really believe you should be a part of, that's where you can make an investment to go, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna seek this out, I'm going to do that. And, and I recommend every actor who's done a bunch of episodics to sign up and become a member of the, the Television Academy because through that, you start meeting people. It is about the networking. Mm-hmm. And then when you have something that you are right for to campaign for, you have already created this group of, of supporters who are also voters. Your peers in, at the TV Academy, the acting community, are your supporters. Yeah. So it, it's not, so I just wanted to oh, no, say and, that. It, it's, and I just, it's really, this is my second year in the Academy, and I've seen that, and I was I had very good friends that were nominated, and you better believe when the ballots came, I voted for them and them and them. Also on shows that I've worked on, I voted for them as well. It's almost political, if you want to say in a certain way, but it is campaign. It's business. It's yes. the second part of show. It's business. Yes. You got to go for it and and just put it out there. So also it demystifies the whole premise of success. What is success? Because you start meeting people that are your peers, and you go, "There's nothing different between me and you." Yet you're a series regular. Or you meet a producer and you start talking and they have the same needs and wants, you know. They're not gods. Projects are not gods. It's just a project. And honestly, if you really want to think about it, who won the Emmys last year or two years ago? You know, it's fleeting. Right. But what isn't fleeting is your work and your what you put out there. Right. And here is, again, where ignorance is not bliss. Mm-hmm. You know, that you really want to know everything about your business. So you know, how do you win award? How, how does one do that? Because um, one of the things that every year when the awards are coming up, whether it's the Academy, the Emmys, the Tony, whatever it is, it's always, how come we're not included? And it's like, hello, it's not about whether you're included or not. Did you campaign? It's campaigning. Did exactly. you campaign? You can say whatever you want of, uh, we're not being included, but it really is business. Did you campaign? Did you have the money to put into a campaign, to have screenings, or to submit your tape? You know, whatever the process they ask for, did you do that work? Because that's a different kind of work. It's not like, oh, Norma, you were so fabulous in Grey's Anatomy. We're just going to give you a nomination. No, it's not like that. And so I guess when you do go up on the podium and you go, I want to thank myself, I friggin' <laughs> campaign hard for Yes, this. and it's important to know that as an actor. You know, uh, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I loved watching oh. All those awards. I've and never I never like, missed one year. One day I'm going to win that award. And for a long time, I too thought this is, you know, they just pick you. No. And, and you pick me. Can I be? You know, they like me. They really like yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, I learned that in the early years because a friend of mine worked at Variety and there was a certain actress. I'm talking about in the late 80s when I was 12. And she was campaigning every day at Variety, bringing in donuts, bringing in this, bringing in that. And she was wooing one of the top critics to give her good publicity. And if you notice, there's a certain person who holds a very high position in this country, and he is notoriously good oh, yes. at publicity, oh, yes. which is also very important. Yes. It's business, and you got to know how to do that. You campaign. You have a PR person. You have a PR person who knows about campaigns because not all uh, public relations offices or agencies are the same. No. You know that you got to go with the ones that have been to the dance before and can take you to the dance because it's a different conversation and they have than you getting some unknown publicist to help you the learning curve is too high for your first time right you know oh and i've witnessed i went through that this season with my friends you know and they god bless them there was one guy i went to the lecture that they had on that and this one young man said every event 
that was possible to attend, he attended and just went around talking and talking to people, like a good politician. You yes. Know? People might think that's the ugly side of it. The bottom line is the dollar. People want to make products that are going to get seen and that are going to make money for them. That's the thing that you have to be aware of. That's why it's showbiz. This has been so much fun. Fun. Oh, I'm so happy. We gotta do it so again. Much. We gotta do it again. We'll do stories of Hollywood next oh, yeah. time. Cheese man. <laughs> now, if this is your first time here and you're some of my friends, which you better be, subscribe, please. This is really important. This is very helpful. And this is another thing that's free. So don't be silly. Watch all of her videos because they're very entertaining. And not only that, very informative and very supportive. Hit subscribe and then the bell. Yes, thank you, Norma.